All right, guys, welcome back here. JJ, School of Trade, Sideways Markets. It's your nightly newsletter. It's about that time of day again here. 28th of January, a Tuesday evening in our live in our uh, office here in Los Angeles. Let's, let's take a look at what happened today, and then we'll take a look at some charts here and get ready for a very exciting day tomorrow. Now, what happened today? Well, bad news is now good news, and good news is now bad news. What? Ah, there must be a Fed day around the corner because these markets are doing some crazy things. We tend to see the markets take a little bit of a different uh, tone as traders, investors, speculators, hedgers, as everybody starts to kind of get a little bit skittish, a little bit scared ahead of this FOMC report tomorrow. Of course, all eyes and ears right now are on the two-day meeting eight times a year, the FOMC, and today we began the meeting. Now, I was expecting, as you heard last night, I was expecting to see some range-bound markets. I was expecting to see some narrow ranges. I was expecting to see lower volume today. Yeah, right. Things are moving on, boy, roller coaster ride. Roller coaster ride in the markets today. Uh, we are coming off of three, the last three days have been straight to the floor. We've had some bad news coming out of the uh, economic news, uh, new home sales, right, things like that. Well, bottom line is, though, the last three days have been down. Today was the first update in the last three days. And basically what we're seeing right now is this. Okay, what's the scenario out there right now? Everyone's worried that all this good news that we saw at the end of 2013 is going to have Bernanke tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. Bernanke's probably going to come out and talk about tapering. What that means is they're going to buy less bad debt. They're going to withdraw the stimulus that was injected into the market right, to get the, right, to get the economy back on track, to add jobs back to the market, to help the housing market. But now we have this very interesting scenario. Think about what's happening here, guys. Today we saw another round of bad news. Why did we see crude straight up? Why do we have E-mini straight up? Gold settled in pretty much flat in the day, but... Today, we had more bad news. Why are markets rising? Well, think about it. What's been the biggest threat to these rising markets the past few weeks? Good news. Why? Why good news? Because everybody's convinced that if the good news continues, what's, what's helicopter Ben going to do tomorrow afternoon? He's going to say, the party's over. All right? He's going to take away the punch bowl from the party. Basically, he's going to withdraw stimulus. So most traders are you know, chatting back and forth the last few weeks everybody's thinking it's just been too good. We get a bull market in the equities, right? We've had gold tumbling. We've had crude going. It's everything is just too good. They're going to have to taper, right? So today we come out durable goods orders through the floor. Consumer confidence is still rising. Amazing. Again, I still have no idea. Where are these consumers living? Where, what planet are the consumers that they're interviewing here? And they're so confident. Because the jobs aren't back, the housing market's not cruising, we're not there yet, but continue to see consumer confidence that comes in higher. Again, where are they interviewing these consumers? Because I'll tell you right now, here in Los Angeles, it's not as bullish as these reports would have you see. Well, we'll move off of the consumer confidence number. But bad news today now starts to take a different form. Think about this. Bad news creeps in the last three days. What's going to happen now? Now nobody's worried about tapering. Wait, nobody's worried about tapering? Now Bernanke takes the punch bowl, puts a couple more shots of Jaeger in there, and pushes it right back over. Party's back on. So that's the reason why today I say bad news is good news. And remember, now good news can be bad news. Remember, because if we have some good news coming out tomorrow, what's going to happen? Right, Bernanke and the rest of the Fed are going to say, nope, we got we to gotta pump the brakes a little bit, start withdrawing the stimulus in the form of Fed tapering. All right, so bad news, good news, good news, bad news. I know, it's a roller coaster ride. Now remember, in my trade room, we don't care about the news. I don't care. This is all speculation. I'm having fun this evening talking about what's happening in the market. I find it interesting, but it's not going to help me make any more money. I'm a pattern trader. I manage risk precisely and I follow a simple trading plan. That's the way that you make money in markets like this. If you're trying to predict this stuff, guys, good luck. Good luck. You're competing against some very, very smart people around the world. Now, what else happened today? 
Gold ended up flat after rebounding after some losses early in the session. Uh, Russell stayed inside its range. Now, we were right about that on the Russell. The Russell was inside day today, but boy, we had a great time making money in the Russell today in our trade room. Crude oil, rocket ship on crude. The second day in a row, I, I wasn't able to get into that move before it jumped up. I was too busy printing money out of the E-minis this morning. But crude oil also traded higher. How? How does crude go higher on literally durable goods? What did it come in? It's 1%. I mean, it was horrible durable goods. So amazing to see that gold stayed flat. Equities and commodities go higher. H how does that work? Exactly. Bad news is good news. Speculators on crude oil now are thinking that, oh, well, they're not going to taper now, right? The party will keep going. Some other interesting news here today, Apple, right? Starting to see some cracks showing in the sidewalk here. Um, the foundation of Apple, boy, down 7.3%. Remember, it's earnings season, the month of January follows December, right? So earnings season in January. Ford, right, biggest automaker in the U.S., uh, symbol F on the, uh, on the stock exchange, Ford reporting earnings today, a 90% jump year to year in Ford. I'll tell you, if there's one U.S. domestic automaker, I'll tell you, Ford has definitely been the one that really has stood out. And you know Ford? Ford didn't take a drop of, of bailout money. Yeah, pretty incredible when you read about the changes they've made at, at Ford Motor Company without any of that bailout money that all the other automakers took. All right. Don't forget FOMC tomorrow. Oh, really? I, I, I didn't know. Right. Yeah. Unless you've been living under a rock. Right. FOMC is tomorrow, Wednesday, the 29th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Tomorrow's trading is going to be difficult afternoon. So make your money in the morning. And don't be surprised if it's pretty sloppy out there as it flutters higher into that two o'clock news report. Uh, gold contracts roll over. You're going to see gold roll over from the two to the four month. So we're moving from February up to April 2014. That'll be on Friday, maybe late Friday, Monday morning. We'll see how it looks in the volume. Chinese New Year on the 31st. Now, the Chinese New Year is important because the whole entire economy in China is going to slow down, not this week, but next week, because a big set of pilgrimages, right? That's one of the kind of one of the traditions is people pack up and they go on big journeys. And then very exciting tonight, right, whether you like or hate President Obama, right, whether you're a politician or not, we got the State of the Union address tonight at 8 o'clock. Always interesting to see kind of the U.S. democratic process in action, right? Very cool time. So tune in 8 o'clock Eastern time tonight. You can watch our President Obama here in the U.S. issue his State of the Union address. A very exciting day in the markets today. But boy, I'll tell you, we got a lot of exciting stuff to look at for charts because we got some interesting patterns to look at tomorrow. You ready to rock and roll? Roll the sleeves up. Let's grab these charts and let's get ready for tomorrow, FOMC the 29th. All right, guys and gals, I got some charts loaded up here on my trading computer. Sleeves are rolled up. Let's rock and roll. First of all, before we get started with charts here, I want to remind you guys, you can always go right over to our website over here at schoolatrade.com. You can register for our newsletter by using this pop-up on the homepage. You can also register for our free trial. Our free trial is going to come included with an invitation to come join me in my live trade room tomorrow afternoon. So join the free trial and I'll shoot you an invite to come out and join me in the trade room. Also, don't forget, we offer three levels of membership, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Our most popular membership package is definitely the advanced course. And you can learn more about that at schooloftrade.com. Also, head over to the blog, and on our blog, you'll see we have plenty of information about our, about our various trading strategies. We get some frequently used links over here on the side, and don't forget, you can always attend our trade room, whether our free trial or get our free pass to attend our trade room right on the blog. All righty, enough chit-chat here, guys. Let's grab a look at tomorrow's news. Let's get ready for tomorrow, tomorrow's Fed Day. So we got a relatively simple plan tomorrow. We do have some important news from crude oil inventories at 1030. And we've got, of course, FOMC meeting tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Can you guess which one we're going to be focused on? Absolutely. Tomorrow's FOMC meeting. Now, here's how we're going to trade tomorrow. First of all, it's a Wednesday, and it's a Wednesday where we have crude oil inventories. This tells us right off the bat, tomorrow... The CL0314, which is the current front month contract, okay, we are going to have to be very careful tomorrow trading crude oil. The problem with trading crude oil before the news comes out is it's going to be a little bit 
Usually, it's pretty sloppy before that news comes out. Most days on Wednesday, we're going to want to wait patiently until after that news comes out at 1030. The problem we have for tomorrow, though, is, is that pretty much after 1030, all eyes are going to shift now on the FOMC report. So we're going to have to play it by ear tomorrow, but don't be surprised if crude is sitting there real sloppy early in the session. And so be patient. You'll get a few opportunities tomorrow before 1030, but I would imagine that we're probably going to have a difficult time trading crude tomorrow. All right. I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope we come in and we're seeing price moving very well. But usually Wednesdays are a little bit sloppy ahead of inventory numbers on crude. And then after the number, we're going to be focused on that FOMC meeting announcement. Basically, tomorrow, after 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, you've got to really start worrying about getting out of trades, being, being in trades over lunch. It's going to be a little bit dangerous because it's going to get really thin. The volume will dry out, and usually what will happen after about 11 o'clock is we'll start to see this fluttering higher of prices. Right? Typically, we'll see prices rise. Not really sure exactly why that happens. Right? Lots of phenomenons like that with human beings in, in the financial markets. But we typically see price begin to rise ever so slightly on low volume heading into 2 o'clock. We're going to be sitting on hands until we see that report come out at 2 o'clock. Now, if you're a smart trader, you're going to skip the entire afternoon tomorrow and not even go anywhere near the FOMC announcement. I tell my students not to trade FOMC after the report unless they've seen six of those reports. All right, this happens eight times a year. So six of them means you're going to be about almost eight months before you really have the ability and the experience to see what this violent reaction can be regarding FOMC. Now, guys, there are two news reports that I pay attention to, only two of them. There are only two news reports that I even care about. Now, I care about all of them because I trade around the news. But what are the two reports that I actually care about what they say? Non-farm payrolls and FOMC. Okay, Those are the only two. Everything else is noise. Everything else is a distraction. Everything else is manipulated. They're lying to us, guys. All right, You can think whatever you want to think. But the reality is, is all the other news events, Right? they're either... They're either noise, they're manipulated, or they're inaccurate. Guys, the only ones I really care about reading and what they're actually saying, right? I care about all the news, but I'm going to trade around them. Only two that I care about, though, is non-farm payrolls and FOMC. So tomorrow, we're getting in early and we're getting out early. All right, we're trading tomorrow from 8 a.m. Ah, we can trade about 7 a.m., right, until about 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Okay, 10.30-ish, you're going to start to see this market sort of fall apart. Okay, hope I'm wrong. Probably not going to be, though. I've seen a lot of these FOMC meeting announcements uh, in my career of over 13 years doing this. And this is usually going to be one of the more difficult mornings after 10.30 in the morning. All right? Then be careful because after we get through 2 o'clock, it is going to be violent with a capital V. All right? It's going to be a violent reaction. Be careful. Be careful. If you think your stops are going to hold when FOMC announcement comes out, you better think again. Okay, There ain't a stop loss on the planet that's going to hold when this thing starts whipping around crazy. Right? You want to have a good time tomorrow? Kick your feet back, grab a cup of coffee, and watch the gold market. Gold will always be the most violent mover. Dollar, of course. Euro will respond well to that. And then everything else is going to trickle down from there. So be careful tomorrow. If there's one day when I really, really need to be careful, it's FOMC. This is the day, all right? So don't say I didn't warn you guys. Trade in a simulation account if you haven't seen six of these events before. I'm not even going to touch it after 2 o'clock. I'm not touching it after 11 o'clock tomorrow, all right? And I, and I encourage you guys to be careful as well. All right, let's open some charts up, and let's get this party underway. First things first here, what happened today on crude? Start with the VIP chart. Now, again, I know I'm scratching my head going, what? How did crude go higher today when we had such bad news the last few days? Again, bad news apparently is good news. So what are we seeing here today on the VIP chart? Well, we look at three different things tonight and then one important clue tomorrow. First things first, the two-day relationship is bullish, right? Higher highs, higher lows. What's my range? My range is relatively wide. That's two days in a row of very wide ranges. Now, remember, 
I thought for sure we would have seen a very range-bound day today. And when we opened up inside today's range, right, remember what happened today? It stuck here for a while, didn't it? It didn't, it didn't move quickly. I thought for sure when this thing opened up inside that range, I thought we'd be trading sideways, right, just because of what we'd seen this big range yesterday. But what happened was we immediately saw a bullish tone, right? We take a breakout trade early in the session every morning. And this morning we saw just this bullishness to that market. And we quickly realized that, okay, we're bullish coming into the opening bell. And we knew that because we opened up inside that range, that the high of that range would be the target. Right? If we open up inside the range, that means we're in balance. That means the buyers and the sellers can both push to the highs, and then we were planning on getting that big collapse back down in. Never happened, though. We were sitting here this afternoon in our group chat room talking about, is it going to drop now? Is it going to come back now? But you can see, though, the closing print today, very bullish, right up near those highs. So it's tough to predict going in tomorrow. I'm not going to even try to predict what's going to happen here tomorrow being FOMC day. But one thing I know is for sure, if we open up above the 97.84, sorry about that misspelling, that's 97.84. If we open, open up above 97.84, we're bullish. Open below 96.21, and I'm bearish. If I open up inside the range, I'm going to be two-sided. And just like this morning, when the price opened up inside yesterday's range, we're going to wait for about 15 minutes. Okay, that's why this is a 15-minute chart. And then we're going to watch and see what direction it wants to go. Usually what's going to happen is it'll either run down to the previous low of day or up to the previous high of day. And then, like I said earlier, we usually get profit-taking, and it usually comes right back into the middle. Didn't do that today. Nonetheless, though, tomorrow morning, if we open up inside today's range, wait a few minutes, figure out who's in charge. I'll be doing that tomorrow in real time in front of a, a few hundred people in my trade room. So come out and see me tomorrow morning, and I'll show you how to read that opening bell print. So crude, bullish above 97.84, bearish below 96.21, and two-sided inside the range between them. All righty, let's keep going. Over to the anchor chart here. Now, on the anchor chart, all signs point to right bullish. And you can see here, I can find a little channel here that I just think I missed there. You can see, can I try to find where that channel will be? We'll draw it up here. So you can see we're very bullish, very easy to see that. And what I've done is, is I've, I've marked up some key levels of support that I'm going to be buying at here tonight if price can pull back before it goes higher. So basically right now, looking at this crude chart, you can see here, I've got some levels of resistance overhead. We're going to use these levels as profit targets. All right, guys? So 98.82, 99.78, 99.46, those are going to be profit targets. Now, in this bullish trend, we are not going to sell at that area, right? That's not going to be our reversal. What I want to do is I'm going to wait for price to move lower so I can buy it at a discount. Remember, Whenever we find a bullish trend like this, it tells us to buy. Where do we buy? We buy at support. We buy at lows. We buy at a discount. Where is crude oil trading at right now? What do you think? Take a look at this a little bit closer up now. And where is crude trading at right now? Are we at a discount or are we at a premium? We're at a premium, right? We're just off of this recent high. So we're pretty much at a premium. I don't want to buy a brand new BMW when the cost is higher than it's worth. I want to buy that BMW when they have a sale this weekend. I want to buy it at a good value. I want to buy at a discount. Just like if I was going to sell something, I would like to sell it at a premium. I want to sell it when prices are high. So we are bullish right now on crude oil. So I'm not trying to buy until this price pulls back. And I'm specifically looking at 96.44 down to 96.15. This area right here would make for a great location to then start buying here either this evening or tomorrow morning. Now, if we do happen to keep going higher here without pulling back, I am going to wait here, guys. I'm going to wait for price to pull back before I buy it. All right, smart traders always buy at a discount in a bull trend, in a bullish trend. I don't care how confident I am because when I buy at the highs, I am doing the exact opposite of what a wise trader would do, right? It's like, it's like buying a new BMW 
after the dealership doubles the price. Eventually, you're going to get you're going to get burned. It may not be when you buy it; it'll be when you sell it. All right, so follow the plan. So let me make sure I get all these levels here for you. Oh, that's right, I got a couple levels up top here. If we keep on running. I've got 103.67, 102.01, 159, and again, the 98, 82, 99, 78. So those are our profit targets overhead as this bull market continues into tomorrow's FOMC day. Again, I'm not even going to try to predict. What I will do, though, is, is every time I see a bullish trend, I'm buying on the pullbacks. I'm going to buy a discount. And you can see I've got some great levels marked up here for us to use for easy buying spots. And then we've got some great targets overhead now to use to, right, to, to get your cash out of the market. All right, there's my crude anchor. Let's keep going. How about down to some, some black gold, now to our gold gold. Here's our, here's our gold futures. Now, gold's been all over the place, as you guys have seen, right? Up, down, sideways, pretty much leveled off today. But look what we saw today on gold. Very, very interesting price action we see leading into an FOMC report on gold. Remember how I said earlier, if you want a good entertainment value tomorrow for FOMC, watch gold tomorrow during FOMC. You're going to see a violent reaction. It always does from gold because whenever we hear from FOMC, they talk about interest rates. They talk about monetary policy, and that's going, to, that's going to directly affect the price of gold futures. Today's two-day relationship on gold was lower. You can see lower lows, lower highs here on gold. Today's trading range was pretty much typical, right? It wasn't really, it didn't really stand out. It wasn't a very wide range. It wasn't uncharacteristically narrow. The closing print today was bearish, which is very interesting. We get this big gap open down here, right? This big gap. So if we get below that 48.2, you know we're going to fill this gap. So we're selling short below 48.2 down to 42.8. Look closely, though. I have the previous week low down here. That's where I expect price to go if we open up below 48.2. All right? I expect this gap to be filled relatively quickly, and then we should, we should end up to that previous week low. All right? So from previous week high to previous week low, that's my target. 1235.1. Now remember, we may not even get a chance to grab this tomorrow morning because this FOMC report is pending at 2 in the afternoon. So we may see it open up right inside the range and it may never really go anywhere. But we know what our plan is if tomorrow at 820 we're below 48.2. What about the opposite side? What if we open up above 62.3? If we open up outside of the range to the to the high side, right? Open up above 62.3. You guessed it, opposite direction. Now we're going to the previous week high. So immediately we're going to buy here above 62.3, looking to get up to that 70.4. I shouldn't say immediately. I always need a pattern, right? Always need a pattern. So I'm going to look for that pattern immediately when I see the opening print tomorrow at 8.20 a.m. Eastern time above 62.3. Okay, looking, looking above here, you can see we got a couple more levels overhead. If we do take off here to the upside, again, my initial target is going to be 70.4. I've got 75.6. I've got 84.6 overhead. I've got 96 here if it happens to go crazy. And then we get the big round number of 1,300 all the way up. All right, guys, I'm going to post this chart in the blog for you guys so you have it for tomorrow. As we go lower here tomorrow, all right, as we go lower here tomorrow, again, my immediate target is going to be that previous week's low. But you can see here, though, we got 22.8 and 18.3. These are going to be some easy targets here if this thing starts to really tumble. All right, what's going to happen is if they come out tomorrow and if the FOMC report says something along the lines of expect tapering, you're going to see this market tumble. Right, gold should tumble pretty darn quickly tomorrow if they start to use the term tapering right as being eminent. Now, looking at the anchor chart, you can see here, look at the trend. Trend is down. We have what we call a triple threat. I've got long-term trend down, short-term trend is down. I'm below all of my key moving averages. These are really important clues, guys. This tells me that I have a green light to be selling short. Now, the only red flag that I see is this double bottom. This double bottom, I have a symmetrical pattern right here. And it's a little bit tough to see. But if you look closely, there's a symmetrical pattern right there. See that? See how it's symmetrical? Okay, the same, the same range 
was made. Now, normally, that wouldn't be a reason to be concerned. But then we got the double bottom, as if to scream at us that we're going into a possible wedging scenario here where overnight we may see some consolidation. Bottom line, though, is, guys, gold is bearish on my anchor chart. What do we do when we see a bearish trend? I got a bearish channel. I've got a red cloud. I've got lower lows. I've got lower highs. Yeah, I'm bearish. That's right. What do I do with that now? I sell when we're bearish. But guys, timing is everything. When do I sell? I sell at, what was it again? A premium. Absolutely. We buy at a discount. We sell at a premium. So where would be a premium price for gold? Where would be a premium price for gold? I think it would be 55.3 or 59.3, right? That would be a premium. Where would be a discounted price for gold? Absolutely, down at these lows. That would be a discounted price, 1248. So if my job is to sell gold, do I want to buy or sell? No, I want to sell. I want to sell at a premium. So I'm going to wait here, just like we talked about on crude oil, if I'm going to buy, I'm going to wait for price to go lower first. If I'm going to sell, I want to wait for price to go higher. So I've given you guys some easy spots here. I'm looking to sell 55.3, looking to sell 59.3. I've got a couple other levels here, 64 even, 66.1, 67.7. And the last call here, guys, the last call, 1273 to 1276, those are the four areas where I'm going to be looking for short trades on gold pretty much right now. Now, if we go lower, I got a bunch of great targets down here for you. We've got 48 even. That's the low of that of that move. I got 44.2, 39.2, 34.0, and of course, that previous week low here at 30.8. Now, I would assume that if these right if we hear from the Fed tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon and we're talking about tapering right that's going to be eminent if they if they really address this, the 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 uh, situation and say we are going to be tapering because we do need to kind of put the put the uh, the pedal on the on the you know kind of pump the brakes on the US economy this thing will hit that previous week low all right it will hit that previous week low if this thing starts to sell off tomorrow after two o'clock don't even worry about anything besides that previous week low if we're not there already, all right? But what I'm talking about is if overnight tonight, if I can get a short here, 55.3, I'm definitely taking some profit off at these levels that I have marked up below me. And look closely, you can see that this channel, the low of that channel actually lines up right with that 44.2. So do your homework, get ready for the shorts here on gold. I want to see price go higher before it goes lower. If it happens to go lower, I'm waiting for a new lower low. Once I get a lower low, then I'm off the downside selling and using these as my profit targets. So if we do go lower, you've got a little bit of wiggle room here for a short before we run into 48 even. But do not sell short at 48 even, guys, right? You're playing with fire. Wait for a new lower low. Once we get below 48, then you're good to go again as far as selling short. But no selling into 48 even. I'll gladly sell short right now, right? But I've got to be careful not selling down there at 48 even. The goal would be to get it to go up before it goes lower, and then I'm going to use these as profit targets. I'm not buying these, prop these, these areas below me, all right? I'm using them as profit targets, all right, guys? So you get your plan put together for gold, all ready to rock and roll for tomorrow. Last but not least... How can we forget about you, Mr. Mighty Mini Russell? The equity markets have been on a roller coaster ride. It's been a busy week the last few weeks here. It really has. Um, end of the year was very bullish on equities. And then it feels like everybody's been taking some profit out of those equity markets over the past over the past 10 days as we've run into a little bit of turbulence here going higher. Uh, bad news is good news today on equities, so it's really difficult to tell what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, I could easily see prices going higher, just the same as to see prices going lower. But it's all about tomorrow's FOMC report. Today was a very interesting scenario. Look at the narrow range we saw today on the Russell.
Now, believe it or not, we actually were able to get into some very profitable trades here just after about 10 o'clock uh, this morning in the Russell. So even though this narrow, narrow range was there, don't let that little range fool you. It gave you some pretty great opportunities to make some money today, uh, this morning in our trade room on the Russell. So first things first, you're looking at the VIP chart. The two-day two relationship is sideways. I, I really should probably call it consolidating because that's pretty much what it is, but it's sideways. It's inside yesterday's range. Now, the range type today was very narrow. Normally, when we get a narrow range like we saw up here, normally that's going to result in a very wide range to follow. Now, I would assume tomorrow with the FOMC report that we are indeed going to get some wide ranges tomorrow on all the markets that we trade after that news report comes out. Closing print today was at the highs, very bullish, almost as if to retreat back to that prior week low. So I think that's where we're stuck right now. You get the prior week low, you can see we finished up, uh, what was that, on Friday. On Monday, we come in, we pretty much got right back to that prior week low, and here today, we make it right back up to it. So tomorrow, don't be surprised if we open up right around this 1139, 38 area. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adapt a little bit to this inside type of range. Now, I'm going to have to open up above 44.5, and we're bullish. We're going to go up to that next level overhead, up to the level above that up to the previous week's high. So use these levels overhead as good profit targets if we open up tomorrow morning above 44.5. Now, opposite side, if we open below 17.5. Now you'll notice I'm not using my typical my typical technique where I'll look for the high of day, low of day. I'm actually using yesterday's high because you can see we're actually still inside of that range. So what I'm looking for tomorrow is, is an open below 17.5. That's, 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 of course, below Monday's low. And an open above 44.5, that's Monday's high. Don't be surprised if we see a pretty sloppy day. As we go lower tomorrow, though, if we open up below 17.5, I've got targets at 5.3, 95.8. There's your big round number of 1,100. 88.6, 74.0. All right, guys, so use those levels marked below if we open up below 17.5 and all of a sudden we're selling off tomorrow morning, right? I'll be selling short right along with the rest of our students in our trade room. If we open above the 44 half, you know what we're doing. We're buying here and we're going to use these areas above me as profit targets as we said earlier. A very, very good day today on the Russell in our trade room. Hope you guys made some money on that market as well. Moving Last but not least here, we'll grab the anchor chart here now on the Russell. And here we are, another interesting scenario here. We get a short-term bullish trend. Now remember, we're going to buy where? At a pullback. We're going to buy at a discount. We're going to buy at support. We're going to buy near the lows. So when I look at this anchor chart, the first thing I think of is I can't buy right now. All right? I can't buy right now. I'm at a premium. Price right now on the Russell is at a premium. I can't buy a premium. Now you'll notice here we get a bullish channel. We got higher lows, higher highs, right? So we're definitely bullish. We're definitely bullish, but again, we're bouncing around that previous week's low. And I have a funny feeling we're going to be a little bit stuck in the mud here around that 1138 area, like I said before on that previous chart we looked at. As you can see, I've marked up some key levels of resistance overhead. These levels are going to make for great profit targets. So as we're buying, we're going to use these levels as profit targets. Even more so, if this thing goes on a tear tomorrow morning, look to use that 67.7 as a nice, big, fat runner target. But now, looking closer at this, though, let's zoom in a little bit closer here. And let's take a look at what I mean when I say we are at a premium right now. Now, look at where we are here. We've gone all the way up to the top of this bullish channel. Now, what I'm looking for here, guys, is I want to see price pull back, right? I want to see this price pull back before we go higher, right? That's going to be the best way to get into a long. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for price to come back down to these lows so I can buy it. I'm still going to use the same profit targets. I'm still going to use the same profit targets, okay? But I want to come off these highs first. 
I've got additional support levels here below me. Any of these areas below me here, guys, can be used for a reversal, and then we're buying at a, at a discount, and we're going higher again. So I'm looking for price to pull back. What if it never pulls back? If it never pulls back, then I will be sitting on hands waiting for a pullback. All right? It may not. Crazier things have happened. If it never pulls back, we're waiting for the pullback. We're waiting to buy this thing at a discount. And that can be one of the most challenging parts of being a new trader is understanding that sometimes we don't get what we want. Sometimes we don't get the easy entry opportunity, even though we know exactly where the price wants to go. Even though I know exactly where we're going next, I still need to find a pattern. Why? Because a pattern will help me to eliminate risk. A pattern helps me to get into a trade with low risk and high reward, guys. All right? So look for that pullback. Take your trade long on the Russell. I would love to see it go lower before it goes higher. But again, I'm going to wait here until either overnight tonight or tomorrow morning we have a chance to buy at a discount. And that may be tomorrow morning after we've already gone halfway up. It may then pull back, and then we're buying at a discount to take it higher again. Like I said earlier, guys, every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, I open up my live trade room. And we go over the entire morning routine together. We go through all of the opening bell analysis. And you guys can come out and join me as a student tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time as an advanced member of the School of Trade. I hope you guys found value tonight in our newsletter. I hope you guys have a great FOMC day tomorrow. Don't forget to register for your free pass to attend our live trade room or join our free trial. Read our blog and don't forget to send us feedback. Signing off now from the entire team here at School of Trade in our corporate office in Los Angeles, California. You guys have yourselves a fantastic evening. Remember to learn it so you can earn it. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.